Okay, uh, welcome to video number two of the PCB123 parts creation process. In this video, I will show you how to make the symbol for the PIC 18F46J50 part that we created a footprint for in video one. Uh, we are still on the last screen where I show uh, where, I, where we're looking at the completed footprint, and now we're going to just uh, just over here. Uh, uh, to the left of the tab that uh, shows the footprint name that we just created. I'm going to click on the tab to return back to the PCB123 layout. And so in order to create a symbol, I will need to go over to the schematic. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, down at the bottom of the screen, click on the main schematic tab, which will bring me to the schematic. And here I will go to Tools and Symbol Editor. So now that we're looking at the symbol editor, we'll just talk a little bit about the options you have here. Um, obviously, we've come here to make a new symbol, so I will show you that. But in case you want to try to modify an existing symbol, you do have that option. To do that, what you will do is come up to the toolbar. And uh, first thing you should know about the symbol editor, if it does not come up maximized, you will want to maximize it. If it is not maximized, you will be missing some of the toolbar buttons that you'll want to see. So uh, see it's cut off over here on the on the right. So go ahead and make sure it's maximized so you can see everything on the on the screen. And then uh, as I said to load an existing symbol for editing you want to come over to the open symbol icon click on it which brings you to the search tool, the load symbol tool and you would just search for a symbol that you want to modify um, or pick an existing library to choose a to choose a part from and you find the part you want to modify and select load symbol then you have the freedom to change it however you need and save it as a new name and use it in your part uh, for this example though we're going to go ahead and just create something from scratch so i'm going to go back up here to the toolbar select the new icon and i get a blank a blank slate to create the symbol that we need. So we need a 20, we need 28 pins and we need to label them. So I'm just going to create the uh, the symbol so that it looks just like the part that we created. And so I'm going to go ahead and start by placing some pins on the board. So I click left click on the add pin tool and as you do that uh, you see the uh, pin property show up here on the left. You have the option here to start na naming the pins as you will need to do, uh, and, and I will do later. I don't, I don't want to name them one at a time here. I'll show you how I prefer to name them using the pins tab, which gives you a table to fill in, which is easier to work with. And so I'm going to, that's the pins tab down here on the left. I'm going to switch back to the symbol tab for now and select the pin tool again and uh, just talk about the properties here under pin attributes. So we have the pin name, the pin number, uh, which the pin name is just the label that's going to be assigned to the pin. The pin number is the number assigned to the pin. And over here on the right side of each of these uh, properties, you have a, a little I. And if you click on the I, it places an X in the box, and that means that field is no longer visible. So uh, I want these fields visible, so I'm going to deselect that red X and I see the eye is back so I know that uh, property is visible and you also have the option to assign a pin shape I'm just gonna use standard pin shapes uh, but normal pin shapes but you have these options and uh, and you're free to use them uh, you can also set the pin type here I'm not gonna set the pin type but you do have the option to do so I'm just gonna leave everything as passive and so as you uh, since I'm not going to change any of these attributes, I'm going to move back into the screen and I'm going to start placing pins. So I click down and there's one and two, and so I want 14 pins. So I have 10 pins, I don't have enough room, so I'm going to press escape to return to the selection tool. As I mouse over the sides in the, the, sides in the corner of my shaded area, which is the area where my pins are going to lie on, 
uh, lie around. They're gonna, they're, all the pins are going to rest on the perimeter of that shaded area. So it's too small. I need to make it bigger. So I'm just going to uh, click on one of these boxes that pops up and click and hold and stretch it out. So that should give me enough room to add another four pins. And go back to the pin tool and add four more pins. Okay. So I can't copy these pins and just place them on the other side. So I'm going to have to actually place all these pins on the right side as well. Okay, so there are my 28 pins. I still have the add pin tool selected. So I just press escape to release it. And that returns me to the selection tool. So now that I have all of my pins in place, I'm going to go ahead and draw a body using this draw a rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click on a corner of the shape of the area that I want to, that I'm using as my part body. And I'm going to move to the opposing corner and left click again. And there's the body of the symbol that I'm, that I just created. So again, here we have the ref des placeholder for the reference designator. If you look up here, you're going to give the symbol a name up into the general section of the symbol panel. You see the symbol name that you're going to give the symbol a name. You will have an opportunity to do that later as well. But here is the only chance you'll have to set the reference designator. So since this is, um, an SSOP, I'm going to go ahead and leave it as U, but if it were a resistor, we would change it to R. Uh, connector, we would change it to J, um, you know, header, something like that. Uh, so here's your opportunity to make the change, capacitor, change it to C, and so on. Uh, but here's your chance to make that change. And um, you also have the option to include additional properties at this point. Uh, what you what you would do is uh, all the properties. Sorry, let's press escape. I'm drawing another box here, so I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to press escape, and I'm going to go up to the text tool. So any piece of text that I add will be saved with the symbol, and every time I use this symbol, it will this be displayed on my schematic. What you also have the option to do is use the um, the properties that are predefined here in this list. And so what these are are placeholders for a uh, for these various properties. So basically, these are just placeholders, just like ref desk. Uh, if I want to have the value of my part show up every time I put down this specific symbol, I would go down and um, from the drop down list, select part value, which I know is here. Here it is. Uh, you can select part tolerance. Uh, and uh, part value, part price, whatever, uh, just whatever you have in here are yours to use. So I'm going to just, for this, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and select part manufacturer. But uh, so I select OK, and I can place that label here. So whatever field in step in part number in uh, the next video, in the third video, whatever field, whatever uh, sorry, whatever information I place in the part manufacturer field will be displayed on the screen every time I put down the symbol. And so I'm just going to use that as my example. Um, you can use any of the symbols, any of the properties that are in that list, and they work the same. This is just a placeholder. We're going to fill in the actual detail later. So the next step is going to be to fill in to update all of these pin names. And to do that easily, I'm going to switch over to the pins tab, which is down over here on the left. And so I prefer to do that in a table form. Okay, so looking at the, the data sheet again, I have many different labels that I can add to this part. And so I'm just going to show you, I mean, Basically, it was just data entry at this point, but we're just going to fill in this table. So the first one I'm going to go to is pin number one, and I'm going to change the name. I'm going to double click in the field to uh, edit it, and then it's a uh, MCLR, and then it has a bar over the top. So to add that bar, I just type two dashes and select enter, and it moves me down to the next field. And you see on the screen that MCLR now has the label showing next to pin number one and uh, has a bar over the top. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just pause the video, fill in the rest of the details, and then come back and 
and save the part. Okay, so I've gone through the table and updated all of the pin labels. And so you can see them here in the display window, in the symbol uh, display window. And so now, just as before, we need to save the symbol. So we're going to go right back up to the toolbar, select the save icon again. And here we're going to, just to keep it simple, we're just going to use that same name that we used previously. And why don't we just keep it simple and even use the same, uh, create a new library with the same name. And select OK. And if you'd like, enter a description. But I'm just going to select OK using that, the symbol name for the part and the library name exactly the same as what I used previously and select OK. And so now the symbol is saved and we can move on to the third video, which is putting them all together and um, and then pairing the symbol with the footprint, adding it to the taxonomy so we can then use it on our schematic.